Hello and welcome to another Sleepy Dog construction video. Today's video is how to build a concrete channel in a detention pond. What you're looking at is called a storm sewer floatable collector and can be raised and lowered for maintenance. The water will drain through the collector and come out the other side into a large drainage ditch. The proposed channel will be 16 foot wide with a depth of 6 inches. The rebar is a number 4 tied on 12 inch centers. The concrete truck arrives carrying 10 cubic yards of concrete, which is the maximum weight allowed on the roads in Houston. The concrete is a structural mix or a six sack mix with one and one half inch aggregate. What that means is the concrete should achieve a minimal strength of 4,000 PSI in 28 days as per the engineer's design specification. At each end of the channel is a 24 inch footer that will prevent erosion or undermining the channel. The concrete will be poured at a slump between two and four inches and we'll talk more about the slump in a few minutes. As you can see the concrete is very stiff due to the lack of water. The workers are using concrete rakes to move the concrete and one worker is using a concrete vibrator to ensure that there are no honeycombs also known as voids in the concrete. The voids would reduce the integrity of the concrete and cause it to eventually fail. The channel will take approximately 290 cubic yards of concrete to go from one end to the other. At each end there will also be riprap or broken concrete for erosion control which I'll show in the next video. It looks like the forms are not holding so the workers are improvising with dirt clumps to shore up the forms. The workers are using a long aluminum straight edge for keeping the concrete on grade. The surveyor has placed a grade marker every 20 foot. You can see the marker is painted orange. Without the grade markers, the water would not completely drain and you would have puddles of water or what we call bird baths. This is the lab man Floyd. He does a quality control check of the concrete. He takes a small amount of concrete from the middle of the concrete pour. He prepares a slump cone for the test. Then he will check the temperature of the concrete. The maximum allowable temperature is 95 degrees. He will also perform an air test, a slump test, and make four cylinders for the load breaking test. The slump cone is filled one third of the way and is rotted 25 times. Then he adds another one third and will rot it 25 times, penetrating the first lift by one inch. Now he adds the last third and again rods it 25 times. He then carefully removes the slump cone in one continuous movement. He then checks to see how far the concrete has slumped. In this test, it fell four inches. This confirms the slump is within specs. Now he fills a cylinder for a compression break. He fills a cylinder just like the slump cone. It is filled a third of the way and rotted 25 times and gently tapped on the side. Then he adds another third and will rot it 25 times, penetrating the first lift by an inch and again gently pats the sides. Now he adds the last third, again rods it 25 times and more pats. He then smooths the top for a flat level surface. He fills four cylinder marks him with the date, location, and his name. Now back to the concrete pour. You can see the workers are finishing the channel. You can see the workers are using two floats, two straight edges, and a hand trial for finishing. Here's a closer look at the workers.
Here's a different angle. You can see the concrete is being placed in the loader bucket. The bucket will hold two cubic yards and spread the concrete a lot easier than pouring it from the truck. I'll show you another angle. The track hole makes it a lot easier for the workers. Here we are the next day when the forms have been removed, showing you the finished product. The dirt in front of the collector will be removed and will be replaced with erosion control, which I'll show you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.